In this video, I'm going to calibrate the extrusion, aka E-Steps, filament diameter, and flow rate for the Monoprice Mini Delta 3D printer. This is an important early step for creating consistent, accurate extrusion, which can in turn result in less stringing, less blobbing, and better print quality. It is also an extra important step to take if you've replaced all or part of your extruder. I will also briefly talk about some other things you can do to improve your print quality on this printer. As always, I will do my best to put a too long didn't watch and video timestamps into the video description, as well as any information I may have forgotten to cover in the video. If you've taken a look at my Monoprice Mini Delta YouTube playlist, you might have noticed that if someone already has a video covering a particular topic, I just add it to the playlist without making my own video. For this video, even though it is incredibly similar to the methods contained within Luke's Ender 3 guide and associated YouTube videos, I decided to make one anyways for a few reasons. One, I wanted to add emphasis on what I see as hardware and calibration prerequisites. Two, I got some really weird results doing the E-Steps calibration as written on stock Monoprice Mini Delta firmware. So I'm going to cover the workaround, which is basically saving it, turning it off, and turning it back on again after each iteration. And this shouldn't be an issue with Marlin for MPMD firmware, but... I'm doing all this on someone else's stock machine, so that's how I found that. Then I'm going to briefly cover filament diameter calibration, and per re request, I'm going to explore flow rate more in depth in terms of line width and number of walls. This way, you can make an informed decision on how you wish to approach this calibration. Now, big point. No amount of calibration can make up for problems with your hardware or filament. I'll try to cover some basic hardware che checks before each individual calibration, but for now, let's focus on filament. If your filament is of poor, old, damp, and or brittle quality, you will not get good results. I'm a big fan of using a food dehydrator to dry my filament, and there's one of those videos in my playlist as well. Not only is this full of filament some cheap no-name brand from eBay, I've also had it for a very long time. So you can see there's barely any left, and I live in the southeast, so it's absorbed all sorts of moisture. Watch how easily it snaps. It just snapped easily, just like that. Now let's talk about some basic things that I've done to this printer that may make it extrude slightly differently from a purely stock Monoprice Mini Delta 3D printer. If you've watched my other videos, I've made several bed leveling upgrades to this machine, but those should not affect us here. Let's look at what does. First I have these Bowden tube clips installed on both the extruder and the hot end. And what this does is this keeps the Bowden tube securely in place and keeps it from moving back and forth during extrusion and retraction. The person who uh, made this Thingiverse page also claims that it allows you to use a lower retraction distance. Also, I have the Monoprice Mini Delta basic spindle rounder installed on this machine. Anything that can reduce friction is a good thing, you know, this is just a simple free 3D printable fix. There are others that use bearings and stuff like that, but I'm just letting you know this is what I have on this printer. The next, uh, this is a trick used by many in the Facebook group. If you look at the picture of the hot end open, the PTFE spacer right here is oversized. So I cut a piece of regular PTFE tube, stuck it inside the larger diameter tube, this is mainly to help me load filament a lot more easily, but, you know, anything you do in the filament path will ex affect extrusion, so I need to talk about it. And next I want to talk about temperature 
the temperature you should be extruding at because when I go to calibrate flow rate that's going to have a big impact. We'll see here I've actually I've, I've printed a temperature tower already and I just want to bring up an image of a before and after benchy if I can find it. Public, let's see. Open this image up. So my camera is not the best quality. Maybe I'll borrow a better camera for the final one. But the one at the top is just where I just picked a higher temperature to be safe. And you can see I have some pretty thick strings here. And it might be harder to see in here, but there's some pretty major blobbing right here on the benchy. And then after I calibrated the temperature tower, all the big stringing went away. The arc way is still a little bit messed up. And then... The, the bobbing got better here. It's not completely gone. This is just, if you can't see it, it's because my camera is not good. And these were both printed with the MPMD default profile. So if you haven't already, go to Monoprass Mini Delta 101, properly install your printer, load, load the profiles that are already tweaked for this printer. You can tweak them more if you want afterwards, but get yourself a good starting point. Correct your M92 steps per millimeter so that you can print at the optimal layer heights. I'm not going to cover all that in this video. I'll put a link to MPMD 101 in the description. So, and this is also from a somewhat freshly dried spool of filament. But yeah, this is, so this is basically my starting point here on the bottom after doing the temperature tower. Alright, now I'm supposed to measure filament diameter. So if you look in Cura and you go to your printer, manage printers, and then machine settings, extruder, you have your compatible material diameter right here. And the idea is that you're supposed to take some calipers and then you just measure the filament in a whole bunch of spots like right there I've got 1.74 here I've got 1.74 I'm getting 1.74 pretty consistently no matter where I measure it well it's like depends on if I'm if I'm squeezing it's like 1.74 if I let it off it's 1.76 and this is why I usually skip this calibration people do it and the logic is sound basically they measure it in a bunch of places take the average and then you put that value into here but I usually just leave it at 1.75 or whatever your actual filament diameter is and it's still good to check this so every so often because especially if you made a custom printer in Cura. Anytime you look at the software the wrong way and you offend Cura, it's just going to revert this back to 2.85 just without any warning. So this is a good thing to check. Alright, so let's close.